Well, hello again, everyone. Today, we are going to look at some what we call secondary function chords. This is a very brief introduction. Uh, we're not even going outside of C major for this video. I'm sure we will do many more examples of this in class. We'll talk about some of the other issues that come up, but this is just to plant the seed. So take a look at the first bar here. Let me get this slowed down a little bit. How about 60 beats a minute? And let's just listen to this first measure. If we're in the key of C major, which is what we're in, how would you analyze this? Now, this would be a 2 7 going to a 5. I'd even be nice and give you the. Uh, superscript there so it looks like we'd do it in class. All right, so 2, 7 going to 5. In the next measure, I've repeated the same idea, but I'm going to make one change. Let me add it in this way so you can see what happens here. I'm doing a little chromatic motion. Now the first thing you, you notice when that happens, let me play measure two here. That F sharp changes the quality of the chord. We go from a two seven chord, which is a minor minor seventh chord, to a major minor seventh. And anytime we go to a major minor seventh, that's creating the effect of a dominant seventh. But it also has the effect of making that D seem like an incorrect resolution. It makes us want to do that. Because it sounds like you're creating a temporary leading tone. And that is exactly what you are doing. You are creating a temporary leading tone to that next chord. As far as analysis, well, no longer is it this because on beat two something interesting happens. That seems like it would be the response, but it's not because that doesn't tell you exactly what's going on. Since we've created this major minor seventh chord, which sounds like a dominant seventh, it sounds like it's this. Like it's a five seven chord of five. And that's what we refer to when we talk about secondary dominance. This is called a 5 of 5. And a 5 of 5 chord, in this case a 5, 7 of 5 chord, uh, will act as if we were suddenly in G for that little amount of time and we had the 5 chord to the key of G happening, because that is essentially what is going on. But we don't, perhaps we don't stay there, perhaps we go off in a different direction and we don't get a full sense of what's happening. So we can't say we've changed keys. We're still in the key of C. But at that moment, that chord is not in the key of C. It is a chromatic chord. It exists outside the key. So we give it this Roman numeral, 5, 7, a 5. And it resolves to a 5. And I could just uh, wipe out this, change it to a half note, and lose the to seven here. That's just a way of helping to set up what's happening. And that works as well. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to transfer over here, and I'm going to show you something interesting. Take a look at this particular resolution of it. Here the leading tone is thwarted but it still kind of moves around like it's going in some direction here. Uh, we still have a 5, 7, a 5 going to 5, but this time the 5 itself has the 7th added. And that means something interesting is going to happen here. So 5, 7, a 5 going to a 5, 7 accord, 
five seven chord, look at the voice leading here. Let's look at our scale degrees for half a second here. Let's see if I get my scale degree times font built in here, because that, that just looks pretty. In the soprano, I have this going on my standard one to seven. Down here in the alto part, oops, not sure why it did it that way. It's I'm always dicey on the fonts here. I don't particularly care for how Finale treats these things sometimes, but. What well, appears to be a four going a four. In reality, it's a sharp four going to a, no idea if there's even a symbol for it, going to a regular four. This is a very common voice leading move. Let's listen to measure three. We're just, like I said, we're just planting the seed. We'll have plenty of opportunity to discuss this in greater detail, but listen to what's going on here in uh, letter, in the third bar here. Of course, our expected resolution, let me clear out this measure. The expected resolution of a 5-7 chord is then to C chord, so we're expecting something like this. Oops. Put that in layer 2, it's a finale thing. So now, if I take this through, do the complete resolution here, this is what's happening in bars three and four. Let's listen to bars three and four again. That's nice, isn't it? I think that's nice. Nice smooth motion in each line. Fa me going on there in the alto and do ti do in the soprano re sol do in the bass la sol sol I notice also complete dominant seventh incomplete dominant seventh resolves to a complete tonic triad all of our voice leading principles are still at work here uh, let's look at bar five here just for a moment this is a well let's figure out what that progression is That's pretty simple, I think. It's also in C major still. That's four to five. Now, what happens if I do something like this? So we listen to bar six, and it sounds like this. All of a sudden, that four is not a major chord anymore. It sounds like a diminished chord. But we also have a problem. If this is a diminished chord, that's terrible voice leading. If we want a fully diminished seventh chord, we can take care of a diminished seventh chord of some kind. We can take care of that pretty easily. Like, what well, if we did something like this? And just because we can, we'll do it like this. Now, listen to measure six under these circumstances. When you hear that, it sounds like a fully diminished seventh chord resolving to G. So we end up with what we call a secondary leading tone chord. Not sure why the caps lock is on. But... And it's notated in a very similar fashion. Again, this is inside baseball and finale here. I wish there was a way I could do this more quickly and less unwieldy, but this is what we got. And so let's, let's zoom in on bar six again here. This is a seven fully diminished seven. If I had left it as an E natural, we could have called it just a seven half diminished seven. But a seven fully diminished seven of five resolving to five. Listen to it again. And this is a what secondary function chords are all about. They create a localized 
dominant seventh or leading tone chord to a chord other than one. Remember, in tonal harmony, the dominant and the leading tone chords are supposed to resolve to one. Well, in this case, we're creating a localized, a secondary, if you will, hence the name, dominant seventh or leading tone seventh that resolves to a chord other than one. It's not a deceptive resolution per se. It, it's more of we're creating a temporary zone where the target chord is now our tonic, but it doesn't last very long. We're not even talking a full on tonicization or a modulation or anything like that. It's just at this exact point, our focus is on whatever this chord is, so we're going to lead into it with its own dominant or its own leading tone. So this is a very brief introduction. Uh, if you have any questions about it, I'm sure we'll be discussing it a lot over the next couple of weeks. Uh, thanks as always for watching and have a great day.